Master, I've been looking all over for you. I've been lost in thought, Gwen. It is times like these I know in my heart that the new order must not fail. It is exactly because of times like these that we find ourselves sharing a border with a kingdom such as Belquin. Camelot has grown faster than we could have ever dreamt. We must find a way to reach an accord with Belquin. We cannot afford them as enemies. Just half a day's march from Camelot's borders. No wonder King Arthur wants a peace treaty with this kingdom. It looks like a proving ground. That's exactly what it is, lads. Let us hope we've the metal to weather it. Sir Geoffrey, Captain of the Guard. May I present His Royal Highness King Edward of Velquin and his sister, Princess Sedissa. It is a great pleasure to meet you, King Arthur. I've heard much about you and your kingdom, and I feel we have much to discuss. A feeling I share in full measure, Edward. It is my hope that our two kingdoms may come together to forge a lasting bond of friendship. Come. My guards will stable your horses at the gate. Everyone entering the briar goes on foot. Arthur, I'm curious to hear of this new order of yours. I too am curious about a system that seems designed to take power from those of noble birth and give it to farmers and peasants. That is how the new order works, is it not? Sister, please, there will be time enough to discuss this later. But tonight, we have prepared a feast for our guests, after which we will have the chance to talk, to get to know each other better. This is proving to be a most unusual place. No! Wait! Oh! Sorry, I should have mentioned my forebears were very fond of testing themselves at all times. The camp is filled with all manner of traps such as this, designed to keep us ever vigilant. I had sent Geoffrey across to deactivate the trap. I did not expect you to follow so quickly. There is no harm done, Your Majesty. I have had all the other tests in Briarcliff deactivated for your visit. This will not happen again. Never seen such a place. The warrior kings of Valquin are famous for their prowess and their appetite for conquest. A kingdom of such warriors would make a powerful ally. Or a powerful enemy. We have always been a kingdom of conquerors. I find conquest to be most exciting. Don't you agree? Uh, but our needs are changing. We have more people than land, and the people are poor. Without new land to farm, their stomachs will not be the only things grumbling. There's always new land to be had, brother. One way or the other. Don't you agree, Arthur? I'm afraid I do not, Princess. Camelot is based upon the principle that might does not make right. Might has always been the very bedrock of our kingdom. We are a very strong and determined people. But let King Arthur speak, Sidissa. What is the basis of your rule? Truth and justice, Edward. And the belief that no man is above the law. But surely a king should not be held to the same laws as a peasant. That is exactly what the New Order stands for, my dear. Everyone is bound by the laws of the land. A princess cannot take what is not hers any more than a peasant can. And how has this justice fared in practice? It has been embraced by all who have given it a chance, Edward. Difficult to believe. Most difficult. You 
seem a trifle overheated, Princess. Perhaps it would be best if you try to cool off a bit. Oh, Lady Guinevere, I'm sorry. Were you speaking to me? Let us set two things straight, Princess. First, I am Queen Guinevere, not Lady. And second, be warned that if I ever again find you draped upon my husband like a melted candle upon a stick, I shall personally see to it that next time you appear in public, you will do so contained within a coffin. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. A toast. To King Arthur and the New Order, may they both reign long and well. Valiant, I want to compose a letter to Merlin. Tell him what has happened here and that we need his help. Yes, Your Majesty. My Queen, are you suggesting that we stay here? Sir Brian, we came here to negotiate a peace with King Edward. There is a time for talk and a time for war, milady. War? Edward has poisoned our king. We may have no choice. But even if we win a war with Velquin, we'll lose in the eyes of the people of Camelot. There's no proof that Edward placed the poison in King Arthur's cup. Ideals are worthy, Valiant, but this is not an ideal place. Please, my lady, let us return to our camp on the other side of the border. We can better guard King Arthur's life there, and yours as well. I am moved by your devotion, but I must deny your request. But, but your, your majesty... majesty. Arthur has asked me to carry on with his work here, and that is what I must do. And as much as my heart cries out to let you take Arthur to the safety of the camp, I know that I must stay here and do as my king bids me. The letter is ready. Fine. Please see to it that it is sent by carrier pigeon at once. And as much as I regret having to do so, I must charge you to return to the border and ready our troops just in case there is a need for them. Our time here is going to be very treacherous, Arne. deliberately poisoned King Arthur? I don't know what to believe, yet. Belquin has always relied on its military strength, not treachery. Poisoning doesn't quite seem their style. Arn, look!
are you suppose she's doing? There's only one way to find out. Where'd she go? Oh, my darling. I'm so glad to see you. My beautiful, beautiful... Mordred. You poisoned Arthur. How could you be so stupid? Stupid? It's what you wanted. I wanted you to stall Arthur's peace talks, not kill him. I don't understand. How could you just vanish? But I did it for you! Mordred, with Arthur gone, Edward could not make peace with Camelot, and you would be free to use our harbor to stage your invasion of Camelot. I did it so that you could ascend the throne of Camelot, and I could rule by your side as we promised each other. Sedissa, I will topple Arthur and take my place in Camelot, and I will make you my queen. But it's too soon for us to be showing our hands so clumsily. My plans are not yet in place. Don't you see? Everything will follow once Arthur is dead. Valiant! Valiant! There are guards coming! I tell you, this is folly. Why must we attempt to negotiate with a man who would try to kill our king? We've been over this, Gwen. The talks with King Edward must proceed. It is Arthur's will. But the princess herself has said there is no interest here in an alliance with Camelot. The princess does not rule Velquin. Her brother does. We must not destroy our chances by making reckless accusations. It is decided. Now we must go and speak to King Edward. I fear this mission may be doomed. Then you believe King Edward is involved in the plot? On the contrary, I know he isn't. If you wanted to murder a king, would you do it when you'd invited him alone to your castle? Of course not. Everyone would suspect me. Exactly. But they would never suspect my sister. What? What are you saying? Is that Merlin's antidote? Yes, it came by carrier pigeon. Merlin said he only prays that we're not already too late. I see. Drink, my love. Try to drink. None shall pass. Stand aside for King Edward. So that our king's life may be endangered a second time? I think not. You dare to accuse my brother of such treachery? We don't presume to know who poisoned King Arthur, Princess. I came to offer aid to your king, Prince Valiant, and you offer suspicion in return? Get back! Now! Halt! Put your swords away. I command it. Stand down, men. Swords are not a proper welcome for a queen. Thank you, Edward. Valiant and the others have no wish for bloodshed. It's just that they are so loyal to their king that they are overprotective to a fault. I understand. I myself came to see how King Arthur was faring and to offer him shelter in my own quarters. He will be much warmer and safer there. You are a generous man, Edward. I accept with thanks. We should move him before nightfall. I will move myself, if no one objects. Arthur, are you quite sure you can walk to Edward's quarters? <laughs> I won't be fighting Celts, Gwyn. Just walking across camp. Your Majesty, if you won't be needing me, may I take my leave? Of course, Valiant. For Valiant.
God, I'm cold. Fetch my cloak from my chambers. I will wait here in my brother's quarters. Go at once. sister. Where have you been? Looking for you. May I have a word with you in private? Of course, but first allow me to get King Arthur and his party settled. No, oh, wait. Let me go first so that I may... to you that Arthur's death would bring our plans to fruition. So I set a trap to finish him off once and for all. Only Edward set it off instead. A tragic accident, my dear. But there are consolations. <laughs> what consolation is there in having killed my own brother? The knowledge that Veltrin will now have a new ruler. Or should I say, queen. <laughs> yes, I... I hadn't thought of that. You'd best return to Briarcliff. They'll be looking for you. Your Majesty. of another. Time, Sir Jeffrey. You dare to interrupt? Your Majesty. Your crown, sister. Oh! 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 But you're dead! I saw you fall! I. I. Things aren't always as they appear, dear sister. Had Valiant not seen you setting the trap, I'm sure I or King Arthur would now be dead. Edward, I can. I can explain! Enough! Take her away! No! No! Oh! Oh! Stop her! up, Sedissa. Oh, Mordred, have 
everything's gone wrong. We must leave immediately. I must leave. You must get out of my way. But you can't leave me here. I love you. I warned you not to proceed with your foolish plans. My business here is finished. But I was to be your queen. <laughs> well, you're a bigger fool than I thought, Sidissa. You're merely a convenience. No! Mordred! Wait! Don't leave me. I'm afraid there's nowhere left to run, Princess Sidissa. I'm glad you and Guinevere were able to seal this pact, Edward. Thank you, milady, for showing me so eloquently that the way of the New Order is not the way of the sword. Can you truly consider me your ally, Sir Gwen? Only if you will accept my deepest apologies. It's wonderful to see you smile again, my love. Yes, I was just thinking. While Merlin may have provided the cure that drew the poison from my body, it was you and Valiant who found a way to triumph over hatred and distrust, the blackest poisons of them all. <laughs>